boasting an impressive tally of 352 kills, he has earned the esteemed title of the highest scoring fighter race in history. But what was his secret? It's truly remarkable how one individual managed to achieve such an extraordinary number of aerial victories amidst the harsh conditions of the Eastern Front. Is such a thing possible? Let's stick to this exciting video, as it is going to reveal some of the ever-hidden secrets from the era of World War II. During 937 days, from October 14, 1942 to VE Day, Hartman accomplished an incredible feat by flying 1,404 combat missions. Out of the total of 825 flights, he found himself in the presence of enemy aircraft on every single one. It was made possible by the unwavering commitment of individuals like him, who chose to remain at the front lines until their fates were sealed by death, injury, or the eventual end of the war. Hartman's kill rate was impressive, with a ratio of one kill for every 3.99 missions flown. In missions that involved air combat, he managed to achieve a kill for every 2.34 missions. Surprisingly, other pilots managed to achieve even higher averages, although the records were set over shorter periods. Hartman's remarkable statistics were influenced by the resurgence of the Soviet Air Force following Germany's initial victories in 1941. It is pretty interesting how the resurgence of industry not only heightened the threat posed by the Soviet military, but also turned Hartman's airspace into a highly desirable target. If Hartman had been deployed to war earlier or sent to a different theater, his performance may not have been as dominant or sustained. It's worth mentioning that whenever Hartman set out on a mission, he typically received a free hunt assignment. He used complete freedom to select any aircraft of his preference. In contrast, bomber escort missions placed restrictions on fighter pilots, curbing their ability to take initiative and leaving them more susceptible to enemy attacks. Hartman seldom encountered such situations. Consequently, he often found himself entering dogfights with two distinct advantages. The first was the element of surprise, allowing him to catch his opponents off guard. The second advantage was the ability to decide whether or not to engage other aircraft. This gave him a strategic edge in combat. As the moment of attack approached, he patiently bided his time, waiting for the enemy to draw near. With precision, he unleashed a barrage of gunfire, ensuring that his shots would find their mark. Many times, the unsuspecting victims were completely unaware of the impending danger. Hartman had always been inclined towards strategic thinking rather than engaging in physical confrontations. He possessed a commanding presence, yet exercised caution in his actions, demonstrating a deep knowledge and familiarity with every aspect of his aircraft. His commitment to maintaining his physical fitness and mental acuity was evident, as was his exceptional vision. His innate abilities and unique skills set him apart as a formidable and perilous predator. Adding to his advantage was his extensive flight training. It happened during the early stages of the war, before the intense attrition compelled by the Luftwaffe to expedite the training of new pilots. Once upon a time, the Germans dedicated themselves to the rigorous training of their pilots, immersing them in the intricate world of aerodynamics, mechanical systems, and the art of dogfighting. In contrast, Soviet aviators like Hartmann managed to shoot down a few Americans, showcasing a wide range of skill and preparedness. The German ace was quick to recognize that while some of his adversaries possessed impressive skill and were ruthlessly efficient, a significant number of them fell short in terms of readiness. Naturally, the aircraft played a significant role as well. Hartmann's Messerschmitt Bf 109, Germany's renowned day fighter, proved to be adaptable to upgrades and maintain its effectiveness until the war's conclusion. Even though it faced more advanced aircraft, the 109's powerful engine, smooth controls, and sturdy structure enabled pilots to fly it with great aggression, constantly pushing it to its maximum performance. In stark contrast, numerous Soviet fighter planes were more delicate and operated by pilots who lacked the expertise to optimize their aircraft fully. Did Hartman exaggerate his count? According to his supporters, the answer is negative. Interestingly enough, they are eager to highlight the meticulous process by which a German pilot was credited with a kill. According to the rules, it was necessary to have a witness and provide evidence of the enemy's aircraft destruction or the pilot's bailout in order to make a claim. From this, one can speculate that he downed more enemy aircraft than what his official record suggests. As the conflict unfolded, it became increasingly evident that all parties involved tended to exaggerate their achievements and were frequently given credits for kills they may not have actually earned. Throughout the Battle of Britain, numerous instances arose where both the British and the Germans asserted to have vanquished twice as many adversaries as could be definitively verified. In Hartmann's case, a Russian researcher named Dmitry Kazanov emerged as a significant dissenter. In 2005, Kazanov published an article that pointed out notable inconsistencies and errors in Hartmann's kill log. 
According to Kazanov's estimation, it is believed that Hartman's tally of downed aircraft is more likely to be around 70 to 80, rather than the previously claimed number of 357. After this commentary was posted online, it sparked a heated back and forth of opinions with little to no resolution. Hartman supporters raised concerns about Kazanov's data sources and methodology, while some viewed his analysis as a valuable reality check. The majority of individuals remain at ease with Hartman's tally of kills, and at present, it seems improbable that any fresh influx of data will emerge to alter the ongoing discourse. Hartman possessed exceptional piloting skills and demonstrated a remarkable ability to think strategically. He perfected a unique flying formation known as the Loose Finger 4, enhancing the squadron's flexibility and situational awareness. By employing this strategy, his unit was able to stay together and effectively cover a more expansive territory. Hartman's leadership qualities were truly exceptional during his time as a squadron leader in JG-52. He was a true leader, always taking charge and leading the way in battles, earning the admiration of his fellow pilots. His exceptional leadership was instrumental in driving his unit to success, fostering a strong sense of morale and maximizing their overall effectiveness. Hartman's combat record was genuinely exceptional, resulting in a multitude of awards and decorations. Aside from the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with Oak Leaves, Swords and Diamonds, he received the German Cross in Gold and the Wound Badge for injuries sustained in combat. Following his liberation from Soviet captivity in 1955, Hartmann returned to civilian life in West Germany. His journey began in the early days of the Bundeswehr, where he found himself in the role of a flight instructor, guiding and shaping the next generation of pilots. As time went on, his expertise and experience led him to take on the role of a military advisor, offering his valuable insights and guidance to those in need. Even with his wartime adventures, he maintained a humble demeanor and stayed dedicated to his responsibilities during times of peace. Eric Hartman's impact reaches well beyond his remarkable achievements in combat. He is widely admired as a symbol of unparalleled skill in aerial combat and is a subject of extensive study among military historians and aviators. His strategies and principles of leadership continue to shape modern air combat doctrine, and his reputation is still associated with exceptional skill and courage in the skies. Hartman's prowess and contributions as an aviator are beyond doubt. Despite the complexities surrounding his association with Hitler, which makes him a challenging figure to assess in a historical context, in the era of digitized and depersonalized air combat, he will likely continue to hold the top spot on history's leaderboard. In any future conflict, it is doubtful that any modern pilot would come across enemy aircraft in the same numbers as Hartman did, let alone shoot them down. Eric Hartman's reputation as the most accomplished fighter pilot in history remains unchallenged, although his historical impact has its intricacies. Amidst the debates surrounding his connection to Hitler's regime, Hartman's unmatched skill in the sky stands out. His strategic brilliance, exceptional leadership, and unmatched skill have left a lasting impact on aviators and military historians around the globe, who continue to be inspired by his achievements. As we look back on his extraordinary accomplishments, it becomes clear that in today's age of digitized warfare, it is highly improbable for any pilot to experience the same intensity of aerial combat that Hartman did.